Legendary billionaire investor Warren Buffett says each day his breakfast comes from McDonald's. Of course it does, Warren. And his order is dictated by the stock market. So if the market is up, he gets a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. If they're down, he opts for a cheaper breakfast of two sausage patties. Why are rich people always so cheap? Thank you to everyone that has already liked the video. Today we are going to eat like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. If you've never heard the name, you should probably get off Instagram and Google him instead. Very, very intelligent guy. At one point was the richest man in the world. He's moved down the list a little bit, but I'm pretty sure once you're a billionaire, you know, it's all good. You are going to see throughout this video how terrible Warren Buffett's eating habits are. I mean, probably the worst that I've ever seen. But what's crazy is that he is 85 years old, has no health problems, and he's been eating like this for years. He says he eats like a six-year-old because they have the lowest mortality rates, which, I mean, hey, the dude's got a point, right? He's noted for it. Drink probably five 12-ounce Cokes a day. And overall, he just kind of eats fast food and junk. We'll see how this goes. Let me shut up and get in this drive through line before they stop serving breakfast because I was traumatized as a child from my favorite movie ever. They go to McDonald's, they want breakfast or lasagna, and they can't give them either. I don't got Cheerios, what else? Lasagna. Lasagna, what the hell's the matter with you? We'll take uh, hotcakes and sausage. Uh, sorry, sir, we stopped serving breakfast. What are you talking about? We're four seconds late. No, you're 30 minutes and four seconds late. We stopped serving breakfast at 10.30. Ah, uh, horse shit! Are you guys seeing this right now? McDonald's now serves donut sticks? Who in the hell would ever get donut sticks from McDonald's? Hi, can I please have one order of donut sticks? Bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit? I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm not excited to eat fast food. I have not ate any fast food since Bojangles a few months ago and before that, it had probably been an entire year. There have not been fast food challenges on this channel for a long, long time. I'd like to keep it that way, but for you guys, we are going to do it. So I'm gonna start here with the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. You know those foods that you really don't want to like and you wanna be able to say how disgusting they are, but then you try them and you're like, so good kind of having one of those moments. There's just something special about biscuit sandwiches. I'm not saying that this is the highest quality, but it's not bad, I'm not gonna lie. It's just so strange to me. It's just the whole concept of just drinking these throughout the day. But you know what I admittingly do like at McDonald's, or at least I don't mind it, is their coffee and they have these fancy cups now with like the holder built into them after they got sued i guess it's decent i'm gonna make it even better here in a second but i know you guys are all dying to know about the donut sticks <laughs> these are literally like the most poverty things i've ever seen in my life honestly they just taste like fried bread they're not very good Okay, so you guys know I don't leave home without my Peace Sign Select Cafe, and you also know that I can't get through a video without product placement. So this has 20 grams of protein and 100 milligrams of caffeine. I'm gonna add that into my coffee. It's gonna taste delicious. You will never need creamer again if you have this stuff. I love it, and I'm gonna head right over to the gym, which is literally the next parking lot over. I highly doubt working out is an activity that Warren Buffett partakes in. So apparently every year Warren Buffett will auction off a lunch with himself and it usually goes for like two to three million dollars which is pretty crazy but I'm sure it would be very enlightening and you can ask him anything and besides the stock market I guess that's off limits so what I was thinking is like if I had one lunch with Warren Buffett what would I ask him actually leave that down below what would you guys ask Warren Buffett if you could regardless of what it's about for me I think what I finally got down to the question that I would ask him do you even lift? <laughs> See that blonde strip on my head soft Looking at my rolly About 30 grand with that cost Let's get back to the food here Apparently as long as there is sugar in the food Warren Buffett will eat it So I'm gonna have a few servings of Frosted Flakes here I'm making a mess already I don't know, I think it's gonna come out on Wednesday Where I compared store brand foods to name brand foods So which do you think won? Frosted Flakes or the generic Frosted Flakes? 
pretty close to be honest. And then we're gonna have some pizza. Of course, pizza is like the epitome of junk food and everyone loves pizza. And he also adds extra salt to everything. This is actually hippie salt. I don't have the regular salt. So we're just gonna salt our pizza even more as if it doesn't have enough. But who doesn't love candy bars? Well, you might be thinking this is a protein bar, but it tastes better than a candy bar. And Warren Buffett, is a frugal guy. You know what he would love more than, t than trying a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar? Is saving 15% when he checks out on pscience.com. Okay, so I learned something new and apparently Dairy Queen serves more than just ice cream. How about that? And of course, everywhere you go in Texas, they got the damn on Texas flag right there, boys. I can't even begin to tell you the last time I've been to a Dairy Queen, but they're phenomenal. If you guys have never had a blizzard, what am I talking about? Who has never had a blizzard? It's a staple in the American diet. They're amazing and I'm pretty excited for that. But apparently he comes here and eats lunch, like french fries and hamburgers and hot dogs or whatever gourmet food that they serve inside that place. Actually, this Dairy Queen is like a fine dining establishment compared to every other one that I've seen back home. The ones where I'm from, I'm pretty sure that they were just fronts for stash houses. There's no way they were serving ice cream out of those places. Guys, that was such a pleasant experience. Well, when she read my order back, everything was wrong, but she was trying to upsell me everything. She was trying to add on this, add on that. You want any extra Oreo for 39 cents? Can I get you a taco for 99 cents? I freaking love it, man. A hustler up in Dairy Queen. Let me show you guys one of the reasons America is so fat. This right here, this is a medium Coke. This thing is like, I don't know, 32 ounces? How, what does a large look like? It's like a big gulp. Can't say I'm overly impressed with that, but check it out, guys. They brought back the mint chocolate chip Oreo Blizzard. Just look at that. And she upsold me extra Oreos for 39 cents. How are you gonna say no to that? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be honest, it's almost as good as Halo Top. Check out this fancy box of food we got. So, I don't know if you guys can really see in here. Let me try to flip this guy around. We've got Texas toast, french fries, and chicken fingers. I'm definitely eating like a six year old. I can't believe. What is my life coming down to, guys? What is my life? You know, I can't lie. That's some pretty good chicken. Let's try out these french fries. Those are pretty bad, if I'm being honest. They're, they're worse than McDonald's, and I think McDonald's fries are bad. But what I'm not doing is dumping extra salt on top of everything. I guess I gotta carry around a salt shaker here. But I have a feeling that this toast is actually gonna be the best out of all of these things. That's not very good either. That's really just the chicken that's somewhat edible in here. Now, it's not that bad, but you know, you're a billionaire, a billionaire. I don't care if you own this place. Why would you go to Dairy Queen every day for lunch? It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I just don't understand. I don't, where would you guys go? If you could go anywhere in the world to eat, like every day consistently, where'd you go? I know for, fa for a fact, I would go to Whole Foods, their hot bar, spend 15 to $25 every day and be so, so happy. I'm gonna finish this blizzard and then I'll eat that cold. I have no problem doing that because this right here is what needs to be eaten fresh. This is what he's talking about. And he's not ignorant when it comes to nutrition. He doesn't deny the fact, but he's smart enough to realize that what really matters is calories in versus calories out. If you eat 3,500 calories and you burn up 2,700, I don't care what it is, you're going, you're going to get fat. and. Uh, it's just a, it's a question of you know how much you put in and, and, and what your metabolism is. I'm thinking that Warren is really, well one, I think he has a small appetite. He probably just eats small serving sizes because I don't think he's in too much of a caloric surplus, but he could really be just the world's biggest IIFYMer. I'm a brother, I'm a writer, I'm a solar So I just picked up some more food from this place called Lucy's Famous Fried Chicken and it looked awesome in there. I might have to take you guys back there, but I can't even think about the thought of food right now, especially anything fried. That's my problem with fast food. I have two issues with fast food. One, 
is if you've ever been in the kitchen of a fast food restaurant, you'll never want to eat it again. The other is just it makes me feel like crap. All of that fried food is just not a good feeling at all. So I'm going to hold off on that for a few more hours. Bear with me. But I wanted to talk a little bit about investments very quickly. I get this question a lot because you guys know I have a finance background, but I am not an investment guru. So I suggest that everyone talk to a professional, which I am not. But I was reading through some stuff about Warren Buffett, you know, and he, he and I really have very similar thoughts when it comes to investing. And I want to read some quotes for you. These are very good tips. On earning, never depend on a single income. Make an investment to create a second source. Definitely agree. On spending, if you buy things you do not need, soon you will have to sell things you need. I'm sure we all know those people. On savings, do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. On taking risk, never test the depth of river with both the feet. On investment, do not put all eggs in one basket. Definitely agree. On expectations, honesty is, very expense, is a very expensive gift. Do not expect it from cheap people. Words of wisdom there from the man. And I can tell you from my experience, all those things hold true. And I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to risk aversion. I'm not gonna be investing in startups and penny stocks and stuff like that, but I also don't want CDs and treasury bonds or things that don't pay significant interest. So I'm a big proponent of equities, but I can tell you that obviously if you're gonna have a return, there's always going to be risk. This past quarter, I lost let me think, more money in that quarter than I made in a year when I first started working, or at least it appeared so. It was the first time I ever called my advisor kind of frantically, like, man, what the hell's going on here? But we talked through it, and so what happened was, when the statement first came out, I guess the month one, let's call it, the stock hit a high, you know, or my stocks, I don't invest in just one stock, as Warren Buffett alluded to, and then by the end of the quarter, it hit a low and it was almost what we consider a bear market. So it appeared to be to be really, really bad, but even as of today, it's not nearly as bad as I thought. But you know, it could always go to zero like that. So I personally am a big proponent of EFTs, exchange, sorry, ETFs, exchange traded funds. It's like a mutual fund that trades on the stock market. But like I said, you all should really be hiring professionals if that's something you're interested in. Apparently, Mr. Buffett likes himself a nice big old country fried steak. So that is what we are going to have. I don't know that this is a food that is meant to be reheated. It looks so much better when it was fresh. And thankfully, Megan found this place because this is actually more of an authentic type of place. I was gonna go to like, I don't know, Long John Silver's or wherever serves this kind of stuff. But Megan is below the Mason Dixon. So she knows a good old Southern restaurant when she sees it. Let's see how this is. That is actually really really good it's kind of spicy it's got so much flavor to it i don't really know how i feel about gravy it doesn't look like much but it's not bad and i was going to eat this heb pizza cold but i mean look at that it's just kind of sad So I might not own Coca-Cola technically, but I have an invention that honestly puts Coca-Cola to shame. I don't know why he hasn't paid me for it yet, but it's so appropriate for this video given that he only eats fast food and junk food. This is the epitome. This, my friends, this is what we call the junk bowl. So we're gonna have this light ice cream. This is the best flavor, brownies and cookie dough. It's amazing. We have some off-brand Chips Ahoy. Again, all these products are from the video I shot yesterday that should be up Wednesday. Name brand versus store brand. Pop-Tarts, granola bar, chocolate chips, and we even got some sprinkles. So if you guys are new to the channel, I'm not saying that I'm Picasso, I'm saying I'm pretty much better than Picasso. Look at this work of art, guys. And what's great about junk bowls is there are no rules. You can eat these however it is that you like. Like if you wanna make a little Pop-Tart sandwich out of this, nobody's gonna stop you. 
Oh, you think because I ate that bowl, I can't have you too, little buddy? We are gonna have the fat and weird cookie. This is the Black Beauty, and it sure is just that. Let me see if I can break this open for you guys. Check out that cookie. All right, hold on one second. I gotta take a picture for the gram. If you guys wanna follow me, put that on the screen for you. It'll be the best follow you ever have. Warren Buffett would definitely want in on this action. You know, I think that is enough sugar and fast food for one day. I don't think I could recommend this diet for anyone. I don't know how Warren Buffett isn't dead, to be honest. He attributes it to because it makes him happy and he lives a happy life and- Imagine anybody that feels better than I do. I mean, I'm happy, I enjoy life. Maybe somehow, some way that works, but I definitely would not be too happy if I eat fast food every single day. I'm gonna go back to my hippie ways tomorrow with my organic grass-fed, all types of good stuff. When I did that day of eating, that was, or that week of eating, that was great. Uh, I think that's much more my speed, but let me know what you all think in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to watch. You could have been doing anything anything in the entire world and you chose to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I really do appreciate that. Thank you all so much and I look forward to talking to you guys next time. Wow. Really want me to shut up. Yeah, better floss extra hard today, boys. And he had to eat broccoli and asparagus and Brussels sprouts. He, he probably right. would have committed suicide, yeah, actually. <laughs>